Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking into religious language and asking the question, does religious language have any meaning? Interesting. Now, let's take a religious statement such as God exists or God is omnipotent or God is love. We must ask ourselves, do these statements have any meaning or are they in fact meaningless statements? I would say meaningless statements. Why? Let's define what we mean by meaningful or meaningless statements. A meaningful statement is a cognitive one. It is one that is subject to cognition and is either true or false. Right. A meaningless statement is one that is not true or false. There is no factual knowledge associated with the statement and the statement cannot be verified. Yes. So here is where I would agree with the ideas of the logical positivists. In particular, A.J. Ayer. He claimed that a statement can only be meaningful if it can meet the verification principle. The verification principle states that meaningful statements are those that are synthetic, so they can be empirically verifiable, or they are analytic, so true by definition. So if I say a triangle has three sides, this is a meaningful statement as it is true by definition. Also, if I say it's raining outside, this is a meaningful statement because we can empirically prove if that statement is true or false. We can actually go outside and verify if it's raining or not. Yes, I understand. Now, any religious statement or any statement about God is a metaphysical statement and A.O. would argue they would all be meaningless statements because they cannot be empirically verified. You say to me God exists, but how can I verify that statement? It is not possible for me to verify that statement. I cannot show you that the statement is true and I cannot show you that the statement is false. The statement is therefore not true or false. It is just a meaningless statement. You saying God exists is the same as saying blah blah blah. It means nothing as it adds nothing to our lives. It fails the verification principle. And for this reason, I would argue religious language has no meaning. Okay, I understand what you were saying. But where would you stand on statements that can, in theory, be verified, but not in practice? What do you mean? If I was to say, there is a little green alien sleeping on the dark side of the moon, is that a meaningless statement, as we cannot now go to the moon and verify it? Yes, but the criteria of verifiability allows for statements that we know how to verify, even if we cannot verify them at this precise time. So I know how to verify the alien statement. I would need to take a rocket to the moon and look to see if there's an alien sleeping there. We know how to verify that statement, so it is not a meaningless statement. Well, I would then argue that religious statements can, in theory, be verified. Really? Yes. John Hick used the example of the celestial city, a metaphor for heaven. Two people are walking along the road trying to reach the city. One of them believes they will reach it, the other does not believe it exists. But when they turn the last corner, they will know if the city exists. So we will all eventually find out if God exists or not. Once we die, either we go to an afterlife and verify God's existence, or we do not, and we find out that God does not exist. I'm sorry, but I do not agree with this. Any verification of God will need to come from outside the empirical world. We are looking at meaningful language within the empirical world, using empirical facts to verify our statements. Needing to rely on an afterlife as a means of verification is not sufficient to give meaning to religious language. Hmm. Also, if there is no afterlife, you are dead and you are not able to verify that God does not exist. So I do not think this is a good argument. Okay, but still, the verification principle has a fundamental flaw. What's that? It fails at its own criteria. What do you mean? The verification principle says that a statement is only meaningful if it is an analytic statement or a synthetic statement. But that actual statement is neither analytic or synthetic. It is therefore meaningless. So the verification principle's entire criteria is a meaningless statement. It fails by its own standards. 
I see. So I cannot see how you can claim religious language has no meaning if by the very criteria you use to determine this would also have no meaning. Good point. But I still stand by the position that religious language is meaningless and I think the falsification principle best explains this. What's the falsification principle? So, the falsification principle was developed by Karl Popper and part of the philosophy of science. Popper claimed that scientific knowledge was gained once a hypothesis was made and the scientist would test this and would know under what circumstances the hypothesis could be falsified. If a scientist knew what they needed to see in order to agree their hypothesis would be rendered false, then this was meaningful. Yes, I see. So, if a scientist made the hypothesis that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, they would know that if they saw water boil at less than 100 degrees, this would falsify the hypothesis. The fact that the scientist knows what would falsify the hypothesis gives the statement's meaning. Yes, I understand. Now, Anthony Flew took this approach and used it for religious language. Flew claimed that if there was absolutely no situation in which a religious person would abandon their beliefs as false, then any religious statement was meaningless. I'm not sure I understand. Okay, Flew gave an example of a gardener. Two people stumble across a patch of land with some flowers and bushes. One of the people thinks this looks lovely and says, this land must have a gardener. The other person disagrees, so the two decide to verify whether there is a gardener. Firstly, they put cameras near the garden to try and catch the gardener. When the cameras show no signs of a gardener, the person who believes claims that this gardener must be invisible. So. They put motion detectors on the ground to sense if someone walks there. When the motion detectors do not buzz, the person who believes says the gardener must have floated above the ground. So, no matter what was done for the believer, there was nothing that could falsify the belief in the gardener. I see. Now this is the same with religious people. They say God exists. He is all powerful and all loving. I say, but we have never seen God. Well, that is because he's invisible. I say, but there is so much evil in the world. Well, they would say he just works in mysterious ways. There is no evidence to falsify their belief in God. So, the falsification principle would say, if you are not willing, under any circumstance, to accept the falsification of your belief, then all your religious language is meaningless. Okay, I understand your point. But you seem to only be basing meaning upon statements that meet a scientific standard. This is not self-evident. You have just started from this position. Not all statements must be empirically verified or falsified for them to have meaning. This is only true of scientific statements. But there are more types of statements than just scientific ones. You are judging the meaning of all language statements with a scientific criteria. But how else can you give meaning to something? Well, R.M. Hare would have agreed that religious language cannot be shown to be true or false. However, it does not mean that it is meaningless. Hare coined the term blicks. A blick was something that influences how one views the world, and it is not necessarily based on fact or reason. A blick changes one's perception of the world, how they live, the way they act, etc, etc. So, these are in fact very meaningful, even if they do not fall into the sphere of empirical science. So, being religious is a blick. It affects many things in a person's life, their beliefs on morality, their beliefs in an afterlife, the friends they choose, the partners they choose, how they socialise. These things are all important and all stem from religious language. So, religious language must have a lot of meaning as it shapes people's lives. It does not need to meet the empirically verifiable scientific method in order to have meaning. I'm still struggling with this. Ultimately, religious language is neither true or false. How can one take meaning in a statement that cannot be verified or falsified? It might as well be strange noises. Again, you fail to venture outside of the scientific realm. Language is a lot deeper than this. Wittgenstein in fact argued that language functions in a similar way to games. 
Just like each game has its own set of rules, so too does language, and meaning comes from understanding which language game we are playing. So if we use the word field, when discussing academics, the word field refers to a specific subject someone is studying. But when we're talking about sports, the word field refers to the grass area the game will take place. I see. So language has different meanings in different circumstances, and meaning is dependent on the context that the words are used. We need to figure out which language game we are playing to determine the meaning. In a language game of science, I would agree, religious statements have no meaning. But in a language game of spirituality, then religious language would have a lot of meaning. Just like using the rules of tennis in a game of football, I believe you fail to see the meaning of religious language as you are stuck in the science language game. Interesting. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what does everybody else think? Do you think religious language has any meaning? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Take care and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye bye.